let's see what it would look like if we start with like a more raw shot that maybe it's the kind of lens choice and lighting that possibly you would have started with and then we'll see what we get to after synthesizing and putting together all these elements that we just learned into creating a dynamic and good looking cinematic shot. <laughs> So here we are, all right, I'm using the ambient lighting from this environment and I didn't really change the background at all. All I did was simply move the camera all the way to the back wall that's been behind me this entire course. And as you can see that since I'm up against this background, there's not much distance between me and this object. So I'm in focus, this is in focus, there's no, um, there's no out of focus, no blurring, no shallow depth of field that's separating me from that background. So you can already see with that alone, it's cutting down the production value. So the focus, not on point. <laughs> the lighting, using ambient lighting, you know, around. Um, I am probably pretty, I'm probably more lit on this side just because of the ambient light coming from here. And then there's a little bit of a smaller light source coming from here. So this would be my key and I probably have a little fill here. So I'm not super contrasty um, and I'm probably not lit super well because I do not have a rim light either. Again, not separating me from the background. Uh, not a good look either. The next thing would be the lens choice. I'm at 16 millimeters at 2.8. So this is a much more wild, <laughs> wild, a much wider field of view, right? So it's less professional. Um, there's no real way overall that I'm guiding the viewer's eye. I'm just kind of blending in with everything else and it, it doesn't look high end. It doesn't look like it has high production value and it doesn't look like any, it doesn't have a cinematic feel. There's no, there's no depth to it. And really I didn't change that much. All I did was move the camera towards this wall, probably 20 feet, and then just step in front of the camera and started recording. So let's first start with moving me, the subject, a little bit further back or further away from the background to create a little bit of depth. Alakazam. So now there's a little bit more depth in the shot. I'm separated from the background, but I'm clearly not lit. So let's turn on our key light. All right, now our key light is on. A little bit too contrasty, I'm sure. So let's turn on our rim light and our fill light. Look at a little bit better, look at a little bit better. So now that it's a little bit cleaner, I'm looking a little bit more well lit. We got key, fill, rim light. It's looking a little bit more high end, right? Just with a few changes. Uh, let's see what else we could do with the lighting. Let's try and take down some of these background lights so that I'm well exposed, but the background kind of falls off and lets me stand out more. So now we should be starting to get a much, much, much more dynamic image because there's a lot more of a fall off, right? I'm more separated from the background because the lighting on me and the lighting on the background. I'm properly exposed and the background is falling off because I removed the ambient lighting that's behind me. So where are we at right now? We move the camera away from the background to create more depth. We added lighting on the subject to separate the subject from the background. And then we removed the lighting that we could in the background to lower the exposure on that. <clears throat> Now one last lighting thing that I wanted to add that I've been using in this course is having practicals on in the background. Practicals don't necessarily or really highlight or light the subject, but it's more of an ambient lighting in the background that gives a little bit more authenticity, right, to the lighting that you have on the subject. So let's turn on these practicals and see how it affects the image. So you see how that adds a little bit more depth. There's a little bit more authenticity, uh, just more realness to the light source that's lighting me. By simply adding those practical lights in the background, it really just kind of smooths everything out. So now with that lighting pretty much on point, 
the next thing would be to choose the right focal length of the lens. So right now we're shooting on 16 millimeters, pretty wide, you know, that more energetic feel, but it's not necessarily the right vibe or the right approach for this specific setup. So let's see what we feel like at about 30 millimeters instead of 16. Whew, it's a huge difference, right? With simply lighting it properly, using the proper lens, and in creating the proper distance, you can have such, such, such a different production value and a production quality without adding any money to the budget, without adding any more people to your crew, you can create so much of a higher production value for your videos, right? Without adding anything else, it's just simply a deeper understanding of the rules and principles that create a good looking successful film that you can now use in any environment in any scenario so let's take a look before mm. and after mm. so much better all right that's it for the camera lighting and lens mastery of the principles 